Hey there, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Rep Physical Therapy and Fitness channel. I'm Dr. Shrewsbury, a physical therapist, and I'm thrilled to dive into a topic that's quite common, shoulder impingement. Whether you've been wrestling with bothersome shoulder discomfort or received a diagnosis of impingement or just want to expand your knowledge, then uh, you're, you're right on the right video. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the anatomy of the shoulder, the triggers, the signs it presents, uh, the non-surgical treatments, and then the potential surgical routes available if necessary. But before we start, as always, uh, show your support by hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, and sharing this information. All right, so let's lay uh, the foundation by diving into the anatomy of the shoulder joint. While it grants us extensive range of motion, it does come with a trade-off in terms of stability. So the shoulder joint involves three bones, uh, the scapula, which is the shoulder blade, the humerus, which is the upper arm bone, and then the clavicle, which is the collarbone. So this nice little model here, right? So uh, you have the clavicle, the scapula, and then the arm bone, the humerus, right? And then kind of right on top of here in the, in the glenohumeral joint, the scapula, uh, scapulohumeral joint um, involves the uh, four vital muscles, right? So you have the supraspinatus, which sits kind of right on top here, that's resp responsible for a portion of shoulder abduction, so going out like this. Then you have the infraspinatus, which sits right down here and then goes right into the arm bone here. That's responsible for um, externally rotating the arm, so like this. And then uh, you have the uh, teres minor, um, which also sits in this general area and does the same thing. As external rotation and then you have the subscapularis which sits on the um, front part here of the scapula and goes right into the arm bone here and that does uh, internal rotation so coming inwards right so the rotator cuff uh, again is connected to that humerus and the scapula through those tendons and this complex network enables arm elevation and rotation okay uh, so let's take a look at what shoulder impingement is, right? So the term impingement refers to where the rotator cuff tendons rub against the acromion during various arm movements, right? So kind of looking here, the most common is the, the supraspinatus, which sits right, right under. So this is your acromion right here, and the supraspinatus typically sits right underneath that. And when you move, specifically like shoulder abduction, Right, those tendons can kind of jam on each other. Right? You can even kind of see here in the model, boom, it's jamming against each other, causing that that irritation. Um, it, it's also, I feel like it's now kind of leaning more towards just general rotator cuff dysfunction rather than uh, uh, impingement. But this can lead to, you know, because of that, can lead to irritation, damage of the rotator cuff tendons. So what set, sets the stage for impingement syndrome? So various factors come into play, including poor posture, repetitive overhead activities, throwing activities, and even structural variations, um, such as bone spurs or irregular, irregularly sized acromions. And as for the symptoms, they manifest as a spectrum ranging from generalized shoulder discomfort to pain during arm elevation, right? And so a distinctive sign is sharp pain when attempting to reach back into your into your back pocket. Um, so kind of like this, ah, right? So as the condition worsens, the pain intensifies, uh, sleep disturbances are common, especially when lying on that affected shoulder. Um, Patients might experience stiffness and a catching sensation upon lowering the arm. So when you come down here, like, oh, you start to kind of feel it, catch. 
Um, if you have weakness and the inability to raise the arm, that might indicate more of a torn rotator cuff. Right? So you definitely should, should get that checked out. Uh, so moving on, let's explore how medical professionals diagnose the impingement syndrome. The diagnostic journey begins with an extensive medical history review and a comprehensive physical examination. Then your daily activities and job demands also provide valuable insights into <clears throat> the condition's impact. Uh, and then imaging, you know, may come into play, right? So your physician, they might recommend for you to get an x-ray to get a closer look at the shoulder structure. So that bony structure, this helps to identify any abnormalities in the acromion or, or bone spurs around that AC joint. If your doctor suspects a tear in the rotator cuff tendons, they might utilize an MRI, right? To, um, to take a little bit more of an in, in-depth view of the tendons around that area. Right, and so an MRI, it uses magnetic waves to capture uh, detailed <clears throat> images of your shoulder's tissues, the tendons, right, and slices. So revealing not only bones, but also tendons, which actually, um, which actually a few days ago, I, I helped a patient go through an MRI um, that she had done a few weeks ago. And um, it showed the structures involved. And for her, she actually had a moderate tear of her supraspinatus tendon. Um, which is a very, very common tendon to uh, have a tear in. Uh, but anyway, another test, which is a little bit more invasive, is an arthrogram. This method is particularly useful when looking for rotator cuff tears, right? So here, here's kind of how it works. They, uh, a special dye is injected into your shoulder joint. Several x-rays are taken. If the dye leaks out of the joint, it's a strong indicator of a tear in the rota rotator cuff tendons. Uh, and despite being this being an older technique, the uh, arthrogram does remain pretty widely used for its, its reliability. Uh, another method which looks at if the pain originates from the shoulder or a pinched nerve, right? So, um, you know, during the, during the examination, you want to make sure, you know, is the pain, is it coming from the shoulder, right? The shoulder or the neck. Um, so this test kind of looks at that. So uh, they inject a local anesthetic like lidocaine into the bursa, which can help pinpoint the pain source. <clears throat> if the discomfort disappears immediately after the injection, it's likely coming from the shoulder itself, right? So this test effectively rolls out neck-related pain. Um, since a pain, pinched nerve wouldn't wouldn't respond in that same way. Now, when faced with shoulder pain, it's often best to explore non-surgical treatments before considering more invasive options, right? So one common approach is the use of anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen, which can help reduce pain and inflammation. Or your physician may suggest an injection of cortisone into the joint, which is a potent medication that helps to reduce inflammation and alleviate pain. While its effects are temporary, it can offer highly effective relief for up to several months. Uh, also, just giving your joints some rest and applying ice can also provide relief. Uh, so first, looking at the type of shoulder surgeries, let's look at the somiochromial de decompression. So to relieve the pressure on the tissues below the acromion, surgeons uh, will remove bone spurs and trim a bit of the acromion. Right? This procedure is called acromioplasty, which widens the gap between the shoulder blade's bony tip and the rotator cuff tendons, uh, reducing impingement risk and restoring, hopefully restoring smooth shoulder uh, movement, right? So, you know, you got your chromium here, and then um, what they what they do is they come in, and then they just might shave a piece of this off, so your shoulder is allowed to move a little bit more freely. Uh, transitioning to another technique is a resection arthroplasty. So imagine facing not only impingement but also degeneration from arthritis in the AC joint. 
which is a common scenario, especially in aging or overused shoulders. To address this issue, surgeons might recommend a resection arthroplasty. This involves re removing a uh, small section near the AC joint to create a gap between the acromion and um, the cut end of the clavicle. clavicle. Uh, the surgeon has to be precise to preserve important ligaments and allow scar tissue to form which uh, maintain, maintains mobility and reduces that bone-on-bone -bone friction. Now, let's look at, so rehabilitation after shoulder surgery is, is a journey that requires patience and dedication. Uh, recovery times can vary. So patients with impingement syndrome can typically anticipate attending several weeks of physical therapy sessions with full recovery taken, you know, potentially several months. Right, so the goal is to strike a balance between initiating shoulder movement properly and safeguarding uh, the healing muscles and tissues. Right, and so immediately after surgery, your shoulder may need support and protection. This might involve wearing a sling for a few days to provide that stability. And then your initial physical therapy sessions may incorporate ice and electrical stimulation to manage the post surgery pain and swelling. Uh, additionally, hands-on treatments like gentle soft tissue work can help alleviate the muscle spasms and discomfort. Um, so recovering following a simple arthroscopic procedure often progresses more swiftly. Okay, so if you had this, this type of surgery, your treatments will commence of focusing on correcting your posture and restoring your range of motion. As you advance through therapy, active stretching and strengthening exercises will be gradually introduced. And remember, patience is key, right? So avoid overexerting yourself too soon. Now, on the flip end, if you had open surgery, which involves cutting shoulder muscles, demands a more gradual approach to rehabilitation. So typically, you may need to wait up to two weeks before you can even start range of motion exercises. All right, so these exercises often begin with passive movements where a PT will gently guide your shoulder joint while your muscles are, are remaining relaxed. Right? So you might also learn how to perform these passive exercises at home. And so for the last part of this video, let's dive into the realm of the non-surgical rehabilitation exercises that can make a difference. Right, so first, posture is extremely important. So addressing any issues with your shoulder and upper back posture takes center stage, and it's a vital step in the journey to improve the alignment and optimizing the shoulder biomechanics. So think of it as lay, laying a solid foundation for the road ahead. Uh, let's shift our focus to the muscles, right? Specifically the rotator cuff and the shoulder blade muscles. So strengthening and coordinating these muscles can bring about remarkable changes, right? So when these muscles are strong and in sync, your, your humerus, which is your arm bone, right? Can move within its socket without causing any uncomfortable pinching of the tendons or the bursa under the acromion. So it's like giving your shoulder a new lease on life. But again, having patience is the name of the game on this journey, right? So as a general guideline, prepare yourself for physical therapy treatments lasting around four to eight weeks, sometimes even longer. And the research is pretty clear that physical therapy can be just as effective as surgery for treating shoulder impingement. In many cases, as long as the treatment focuses on utilizing the specific stretching or mobility exercises, posture corrective exercises, strengthening of the rotator cuff muscles and the scapula stabilizers. So, it, you know, it's, it's very important to, to capture all of that. And you want more of a, of a detailed assessment for, for you, right? Your, your program might be a little bit different compared to someone else's. But, you know, there are some common exercises, which we'll definitely go over, um, that can definitely help. Hey, guys. Uh, so... In this video here, we're going to be looking at the useful exercises to help uh, increase the mobility, range of motion, minimize pain. Uh, so first, we're going to be looking at the mobility, range of motion, flexibility exercises. 
Uh, so the first one that I really like to give patients uh, to help minimize or relieve the pain is going to be a, a door frame hang or just a just a generic hang from if you have like a pull up bar or something like that. Uh, now it also depends on if you're able to get your hands or arms up over your head uh, as well. If it's too painful, I don't want you doing it. Okay, but essentially. You're just going to take your uh, hands here, put them up top on, we'll say this is the, the pull-up bar, right? And then you're just going to gently kind of hang down and you should feel just a good stretch, a good separation there in the shoulder joint. It's going to feel really good. Okay. You can kind of hang out there for as long as you, as you want, you know, 30 seconds, a minute. It should just feel good. Um, you can do that multiple times. Uh, if you don't have something like this, then you can do like a door frame, right? So you're just going to take your hands, go to the door frame there at the top, the top part of the door, and then uh, same thing, keeping your fingers there. You're just going to hang down. And it should just feel really good, really good in the in the shoulders. Uh, another really good kind of range of motion exercise is just. Uh, finger climbs or kind of wall slides, right? So uh, taking your hand and imagine that this is the wall, right? Taking your hand here and you're just going to slide it up the wall as far as you can. Go before the pain, right? So if, you, if you're having pain and you, you're good, you're good, you're good, pain, okay? Stop there. And just work within that range of motion. Okay. Um, you can also go out to the side, right? So you're here, you can face away from the wall, and then you can just slide up the wall as far as you can without pain and just go within that motion. Okay. So you can slide or you can climb up the wall with your fingers, right? So you can climb up as far as you can. No pain. You can do that one multiple times, uh, especially multiple times throughout the day. It's just good to help promote good range of motion, self-assisted uh, or wall-assisted range of motion um, with, with minimizing the pain. Okay. Next here is going to be a, a pec stretch. So there's a, multiple ways you can do this. So uh, you can have your hands down below, and then you're going to kind of just lunge forward at, like that, and you should feel a good stretch. So here you're going to feel a good stretch right here, okay? And I like to do two sets, 30-second hold, okay, shouldn't cause any pain. Okay. Another, another way you can do it. So you can, you can try a lot of people tolerate being down here, um, cause it's just easier on the shoulder joint. But if you're able to like come up a little bit higher, you can, you can go this way, right? Get a little bit more of a stretch. Uh, you can also, um, stretch the pec minor a little bit more specifically, uh, cause that pec minor, uh, attaches directly to the scapula, which can, cause the scapula to rotate anteriorly, so like this. And if that is uh, not neutral, um, if it's more rotated anteriorly, that can affect your joint mechanics, right? So if you're trying to raise your arm up and your scapula is like this rather than this, then that's going to reduce that range of motion. So when you go up, the scapula is going to bang on to the tendons there a lot quicker, right? So in order to to stretch out that peg minor, what you can do is you're going to be in this position, so kind of in that 90-90 position, and then again, you're just going to lunge forward, nice and easy, should feel like a good stretch, no increase in pain, take it easy, okay? That's if, only if you're able to tolerate that position. If you're, if you're having pain, don't do it, okay? Next here is the strengthening component. So I, I like utilizing, especially there at the beginning, it's called a isometric, so four-way isometric shoulder. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to go to a wall. So pretend this is my wall. You're going to lock your arm out kind of in this 90 degree, okay? And all four exercises are going to be locked here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the wall. First one here, you're just going to push into the wall. So you're, you have a fist, and you're going to push like this, okay? But the wall is going to block it. So you're going to push in. One, two, three, relax, okay? I like to do 10 reps, two sets. Next one here, same position, but now you're going to take the hand. And you're gonna put it this way, okay? And then you're gonna push out. So you're gonna push out into the wall, okay? So push out one, two, three, relax. Again, same thing, 10 times, two sets. Now, the next one here, you're gonna push inwards, okay? So same position, but now you're gonna push into the wall. So push in one, two, three, relax. 10 sets, two reps. And I find that a lot of people like to do this kind of at their door frame. Right, so you can kind of maneuver around to do these. Um, so the door close to the wall might be the best option for you to do these. And then the last one here is you're going to take your elbow, still in that same position. Then you're going to push in to the back, right? So you're going to push back one, two, three, relax. Ten reps, two sets. So that's a really good way isometric uh, exercises to strengthen up those uh, rotator cuff muscles in a safe manner. To, you know without causing any extra damage if it's painful re then reduce the amount of force that you're pushing in okay but these shouldn't cause any pain okay so those are really good and then the last one here is going to be um, a serratus anterior wall slide with a trap shrug okay so what you're going to do is you're going to find a wall again imagine that i have a wall here and you're going to put your forearms on the wall Okay, and then you're going to uh, assist, so the wall is going to assist your forearms and your arms all the way up as far as you can without pain. Okay, and then when you get to the top in there, as far as you can, you're going you're gonna to try to shrug your shoulders, right? So you're going to shrug, one, two, three, relax, bring the forearms back down, assisted by the wall, okay, and then back up the wall again, shrug, unshrug, back down, just like that. It's a really good one to strengthen up uh, the scapular musculature, also that upper trapezius muscle, uh, which is very important for uh, allowing upward rotation of that scapula. All right, so a, another really good exercise that just kind of completely forgot about um, that I was going to add into the video is going to be scapular retractions. So this this exercise is a really good exercise to promote good posture and to strengthen up the muscles surrounding the scapula. And what you're going to do here is, uh, and you can do it either standing or or see, um, seated. Uh, I typically like to do it or have the patient do it seated first. Uh, but essentially, you're just here, and you're going to try to relax your shoulders. Okay, so they shouldn't be up here, right? They should be nice and relaxed, arms right by your side. And then here, you're going to try to take your shoulder blades, okay? So your shoulder blades, and you're going to try to squeeze them in. So you're going to pinch them kind of down and in. Almost imagine like there's a penny right in between your mid back, and you're trying to squeeze that penny, okay? So from the front view, it should look like this. Okay, and you might, like for me, I just had a, a slight cavitation, so just you might hear some popping, uh, which is completely normal. should feel good, actually. Uh, so here, nice, good squeeze. And I like to do about a three-second hold, so one, two, three, relax, okay? Ten times, two sets, and then looking at the side or back view. All right, so you're here, and then you're going to, Squeeze them shoulder blades down and in. Three second hold. Ten times. And like I said, this is a really good way to to reverse that posture, right? Because we, we all like to normally kind of sit here, do our work here. So this exercise allows us to, to open up, expand back, reverse that motion, and allows to, uh, us to strengthen those specific scapular muscles there in the back. But yeah, that's kind of the 
quick rundown of all of the exercises, useful exercises that can help to promote range of motion, mobility, strengthening, and ultimately getting your shoulder to move better in a, in a better range of motion while also minimizing the pain or hopefully getting rid of the pain, right? But again, these are just some slender exercises that you can try to utilize, uh, but there are so many different exercises. So I highly suggest going to see a local physical therapist, get a proper evaluation done, a proper assessment, see which muscles are tight or weak, and then have a program based on that. Okay. But yeah, that's the exercises. Impingement syndrome might be complex, but grasping its anatomy, its causes, its symptoms, diagnose, diagnosis and treatment uh, can empower you to, to take the charge of your, of your shoulder's health. So remember, if you suspect impingement syndrome, seek guidance from a medical professional, your primary care doctor, um, or your local physical therapist uh, for an accurate evaluation and guidance. But thank you for joining me on today's video with shoulder impingement. If you like this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. But until next time, take care.